So now let's go over the MAT fundamentals, which will be the, the foundation for doing wastewater treatment process calculations. So the elements that we are going to review are concepts of concentration, unit conversions, pound formula, process removal efficiency, and pumping. So it is important to understand the concept of concentration as it relates to wastewater treatment. Concentration expresses the mass of a certain constituent per certain volume of water. So the most common unit of concentration used in wastewater calculation is milligrams, which is the mass per liter, which is the volume of water. So we know that one liter of water weighs one million milligrams. So a one milligram concentration is equivalent to one part per million. Therefore, a one milligram per liter and one ppm are the same. And therefore, milligrams per liter and ppm are synonymous. A one million milligram per liter would be 100% and 1% would be 10,000 milligrams per liter. The pounds formula is the most widely used formula in the wastewater treatment uh, calculations. It correlates mass loading in pounds per day. Here, note that the unit is mass in pounds per day. The concentration, which is in milligrams per liter, also to note here is that the concentration has to be expressed in the units of milligrams per liter. If the concentration is in a different unit, say as a percentage, the formula will not work. And finally, the flow needs to be in MGD. So the formula is mass loading in pounds per day equals flow times concentration times 8.34. So with this particular formula, instead of mass loading, which is in pounds per day, we can calculate the mass content in pounds if instead of flow, which is in MGD, volume in million gallons is used. So the mass formula looks like this. Pounds will equal to volume times concentration times 8.34. So coming back to the pounds formula, here there are three variables and one constant. So if any two of these variables are known, the third unknown can be calculated. So this is a visual aid for the pounds formula and this can be used as a reference for calculating the unknown variable. So the top of top half of the circle which is the pounds per day is equal to the product of the elements in the bottom half. That is the pounds formula, correct? So if pounds per day and concentration are the known variables and I want to find flow, flow equals pounds per day divided by 8.34 times the concentration. Likewise, if pounds per day and flow values are known, concentration can be found by this formula, which is concentration equals pounds per day divided by flow times 8.34. So as we have pointed out before in the pounds formula, the pounds formula can be used for calculating the mass content if volume is used instead of flow. Unit conversions. It is very important to understand the method to convert a measurement in a certain unit to another unit. To do a unit conversion, first make sure the original and conversion unit is measuring the same parameter. For example, of the measurement of an area can be in units, which include acre 
square feet. Measurement of volume can be in units which include acre feet, gallons. Measurement of flow can be in MGD, cubic feet per second, acre feet per minute, or gallons per hour. So in order to convert a measurement into another unit, which is the quantity in converted unit, multiply the quantity in original unit by the conversion factor, which is the value of converted unit per the original unit. The original units cancel out, giving the measurement in the converted unit. Process removal efficiency. So in a certain process, you may have a certain quantity of uh, pollutant coming in and a certain qual quantity of the pollutant coming out. So the removal efficiency of this process for this pollutant will be calculated as the concentration or the mass of uh, pollutant in minus pollutant out divided by the pollutant in. So there are three variables here, removal efficiency, pollutant in, and pollutant out. So if any two of these variables are known, we could calculate the third unknown variable. The pollutant in and pollutant out can be expressed either in concentration units or mass units, which may be in pounds or pounds per day. So we are going to look here at uh, the process removal efficiency calculation. So we know the formula for process removal efficiency, which is basically the removal efficiency in percentage is equal to the inlet concentration minus the outlet concentration divided by the inlet concentration times 100. So given that there are three variables, if any of the two of the three variables are known, we could calculate the third variable. So in this first case, what we are going to do is we are going to come up with a formula to calculate the outlet if the inlet concentration and the removal efficiency percentage is given. So the formula for removal efficiency, again, writing it down is in minus out divided by in times 100. And when you rearrange that to solve for out, what you get is out equals n times 1 minus removal efficiency divided by 100. In the second case, if the inlet concentration is to be calculated knowing the outlet and the removal efficiency percentage. Again, the removal efficiency formula can be rearranged to calculate the inlet concentration, which equals to the outlet divided by 1 minus the removal efficiency divided by 100. So this is an alternate method to calculate in and out concentrations. Compared to the previous method, particularly in the case of the inlet value is being calculated, this is probably a simpler method. So drawing a sketch of the process flow, the inlet can be assumed to be 100. Given the RE, the outlet would be 100 minus RE. So when calculating out given in and RE percent, write down the equation as out over in, the unknown out being the numerator here. So this is equal to the out over in when the N is 100. From this equation, the out can be calculated. Likewise, when calculating in given out and RE percent, write down the equation now as in over out as the inlet is unknown in this case. So this is again as before equal to in over out 
when n is 100. So from this equation, the n can now be calculated. So we are going to go over two types of pumping problems typical of grades 1 and 2 levels. So in the first type, we're going to be calculating volume pumped in a given time interval given the pump flow rates. So to solve these problems, basically what you're going to do is to just multiply the pump flow rate by the time interval. The only thing that needs to be taken care of is to make sure that the unit of time matches. So in this example problem, you're asked to calculate the daily volume pumped by a 35 gallon pump operating for a five minute duration every half hour. So in order to solve this problem, you need to just simply multiply the flow rate by the time interval. And the time interval is five minute a half hour. So you're not just going to multiply 35 gallons per minute times five. It, the time interval is five minutes every half hour. So it's five minutes every half hour times 24 hours per day. That when multiplied with 35 gallons per minute will give you 8,400 gallons per day. So in this second type of pumping problems, you're calculating the time to pump a certain volume given the pump flow rate. So in this type of problems, uh, typically you first calculate the total volume to be pumped and then followed by dividing the total volume by the pump flow rate. So in this case, you need to again make sure that the volume units, which is the volume that needs to be pumped and the pump flow rates match. And also the time unit in the pump flow rate needs to be converted to the time unit that you need the answer in. Uh, an example of, uh, or examples of uh, these problems is provided in the handout. So to make sure you study them to understand the concepts here.